Yes, please. Introduce him, please. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Azur, my friend, is from Pakistan on a business tour from Lahore. His name is uh, A. Mahmoud. He is an uh, area manager uh, for a, a firm over there, and uh, today he is with us. And uh, he will introduce her. He has already met Hazur uh, before Hazur became Khalifa at several places in uh, 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 Lahore. Uh, he will introduce. Uh, yes. Well, I had the opportunity to meet you at uh, Gulberg. A friend of, a very close friend of mine is the MD, and I met you at his residence before you became the Khalifa. Who is he? Bisharat Mahmood. Uh -huh. He held a session there, a question answer. That's right. And some ulama were also present, and quite yes. a few elite of Lahore were together. Yeah, that's right. So you were one of those. Yeah. Yes, we had a very good session of yeah. a few yeah. hours. Yes, Mr. Bisharat is very uh, one of my very yes, close friends. I understand. Friend. Yes, that's right. And he also took me to Hilton, right. where you uh -huh. came. And when I, when I spoke about uh, my Spanish tour. Yeah, that's and right. The inauguration of the mosque there. That's exactly. Right. Yes. So I came here on a business what, what trip. Is, what's your business? I'm in the air cargo business. Air cargo. Yeah. Please try to let you hear. Thank, Thank you very much. So Mustafa Sadat Sahib, before Mr. Bashir Hal thinks he's going to ask a question, come and occupy your place. <laughs> <laughs> no, Azur, I'm not asking any question. I'm just uh, answering please. one. No, uh, <laughs> no. It was when Azur when after that uh, permits me. Pan. After Mr. Mustafa. If there is an after him. After him. <laughs> if there is an after him. Yes. Not after him. Now, further for him, you know. Pardon? For, for our guest, I wanted to say that... Uh, no, he's got, your guest can speak for himself, can't he? <laughs> if he wants to put in a question, of course, I'll permit him. No question. So, he wants something for you while you don't want yourself. <laughs> Please. Mustafa Sabet is our Egyptian friend. He is an Ahmadi, with the grace of Allah. He is visiting here from Canada. So, because he is very fond of preaching to others, he has collected some questions which have been asked of him from time to time by some Muslims, some non-Muslims, Christians and other, others. So because he doesn't get that opportunity so often to come here, I am giving him the preference Sure. Otherwise, normally, if you had come on a normal day, most often you will find Mr. Bashir Hayat occupying that place. <laughs> <laughs> Please, sir. <laughs> yes, you come forward and sit closer, yeah. as you were. He likes to sit closer to the microphone, that is why he is there. <laughs> this question is from uh, a Christian friend. Though it, it benefits both Muslims and Christians, yes. in fact. The question says that God had included in his holy books all the guidance required for the benefit of mankind. What is the need for continuity of revelation after revealing those books? Uh, after revealing the Holy Quran? Or yes. The well, books. well, because the, the, if, a the Christ, if it's a Christian, he couldn't have said that. Well, yes, because he is a Christian, he didn't mention any specific <coughs> book. He says after the uh, revelation of the holy books. Yes, holy books in yes. general. Yes, in general. Please now. The fact is that uh, the purpose of revelation is to be understood first, and what part they play in rectifying society. Are they all sufficient or something else is required? This is the fundamental question to be asked. If a book by itself was enough, only books should have been sent from heaven, as people were also demanding. Whenever a prophet came, according to the Holy Quran, people said, why not the book right from the heaven? That is the most essential part. So, if a book had descended from the heaven and we could see it, that would have been enough for us. But the book is not enough. The purposes of the institution of prophethood 
have been described in the Holy Quran very clearly and the book only makes one part of that. In Surah Juma, for instance, the Holy Quran tells us, وَالَّذِي بَعْثَ فِي الْمُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولَ مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ That is the first thing. يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ That is the book, revelation of book being conveyed to others. وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ It is not the book which does the skia, that is what, that does the, which, which performs purification. It is the Prophet who performs the purification. وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ The book is there, but a teacher is needed. وَالْحِكْمَةَ And the philosophy, underlying philosophy is also required to be explained. So these are the purposes of a Prophet. If book remains intact and the teaching is heard by uh, ignorant teachers interfering with the meaning of the book, if the philosophy is lost or new philosophies arise in the world to challenge the bona fides of that book, then some teacher is required because three parts which have been mentioned here as duties of the Prophet are over and above the revelation of the book. Concerning the book, of course, revolving round the book, of course, but book by itself is not found sufficient. So this can be immediately put to test. Those who believe that the book should be enough, they know that it is the same book, Holy Quran, the Holy Quran, which was at the time of Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi It is exactly the same book as it was at that time and as it is today. So, is there any difference in the book? Or no? None whatsoever. But is there some difference in the Muslims of his time and the Muslims of today? Or none whatsoever? <laughs> the obvious difference, so much that if they were Muslims, the present day Muslims don't appear like belonging to the same Islam. And this difference set in so sharply in fact, that at the time of Hazrat Ali Karam Allah somebody asked him the difference, why there was such difference. And the retort he gave was so beautiful. He said, because Ahmad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had people like me to follow him. And I have people like you to follow me. <laughs> you see, the difference in generations and their quality, their quality of sacrifice. So the Holy Quran did not change by the time of Hazrat Ali Karam Allah Wajahu. It has not changed even today. But the difference between the quality and character of people is immense. So obviously it is wrong to say that Holy Quran by itself should suffice in the sense that it should enforce itself upon the characters of the people, their attitudes, their values and run into their blood automatically. A performer is required, one who has direct contact with Allah. He is the one who purifies through the help of the Holy the Book, of course. But he is the one who first practices the book and turns it into a value of real life. Not a word alone, but turns it into practice. And then people begin to follow their like. When they see things in their own kith and kin, in their own blood and flesh, then they follow. Not just the books written somewhere. So the book is essential because the entire philosophy and the way of life and the teachings are contained in the book, that is the word of Allah. But to practice that word, to make it understood, to speak about its lasting values and to meet challenges arising at various times regarding that word, all these factors demand a man from Allah who is being guided by Allah. Take that man out and this will happen what has happened. Bring that man back into the picture and the things will begin to change. Among those who follow him of course. 
not those who reject him. So that is the difference. The Holy Quran is still today the same as it was, but Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa Sallallahu is missing. <coughs> and that loss has never been fulfilled. Unless somebody who is subordinate to him, of course, is raised from Allah on the same pattern. <coughs> he speaks to him. He gives him strength and power and guidance. And he is capable enough, with the help of Allah, to bring people back to the same spirit of sacrifice as was created by Hazur Yadim and is so well guided by Allah that he is capable of meeting the challenges of the modern times and of the new philosophies which have been erupted from all corners of earth, challenging the validity of the book. Unless that happens, the revival of Islam is just a dream or revival of Christianity for, the mat for that matter, if the question was a Christian. Please, after him, yes. Another question? Well, in fact, sir, the, the questioner was uh, asking about the um, communion of Allah with man. What is the need for that after the guidance was already in the book? I understand. That question was much more limited than I thought it was. Yes. What is the need? That is the purpose of religion. That's not a need. The Holy Quran solves this question in a beautiful way. It says man was created for meeting Allah. That is the object. And those who deny that object, those people are destroyed by Allah ultimately. In, in that surah which speaks of Christianity, the answers to every question are found. And because he was also a Christian, I, I refer his question to the verse, to the surah, surah Kaf, which mainly speaks of Christianity. In the end part of that surah, Allah Ta'ala tells us about the uh, Later day Christians and what would happen to them. And I, I'll, I'll, I, I remember the verse I'm going to just recollect it. Afahaseb al Lazina Kafaru and Yattahezu Ebadi Minduni Ol Ya Inna Atadna Jahanna Madil Kafirina Nozola Ul Halu Nabi Ukum Bil Aksarina Amala Al-Lazina Zolla Sayyuhum Fil Hayatid Dunya Wahum Yah Sabuna Annahum Yoh Sinuna Sunna Ulaik Al-Lazina Kafaru Bi Ayat Rabbihim Wa Liqaihi That is Liqa which I mentioned Ulaik Al-Lazina Kafaru Bi Ayat Rabbihim Wa Liqaihi Fahabitat Amalum Fala Nukimu Lahum Yom Al-Qiyamat Wazna Zalik Jazaum Jannum Bima Kafaru Wa Tafazu Ayati wa Rusuli Huzubah. So, Liqai Rabbi, Liqai He, that is meeting with Allah. If that is rejected, then Allah says the very purpose of the creation is rejected and those people are rejected by Allah, who reject the Liqa with Allah. And this is further mentioned in the end part of the same surah. In relation to Hazrat Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam and his purpose of coming, he tells us, he announces it to us, "Kul inna ma ana basharu mithlukum yuha ilayya, anna ma ilahu kum ilahu wahid." O mankind, I was like one of you, of course, but now a change has set in, and the change is that Allah has begun to speak to me. He is revealing things to me. From man kana yarju likharate. It is not only limited to me. Whoever wants to meet his right, that is vahi. Because that is what is mentioned. Revelation is mentioned in this likha. So the first likha of the same surah is elucidated and further explained a few verses beyond that. What is meant by likha? The Holy Quran says, 
the ka is this what was found by hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam what was achieved by hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the proof that you have got likha that is meeting of allah is in wahi if there is no wahi there is no proof so hazrat muhammad mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam tells us that inna ma ana bashrum mislukum i am also apparently like you like one of you but a great difference has set in because god has started speaking to me and that is the ka fa man kana yarju liqa rabbi so if you also want that liqa do as i did fal yamal amalan salihan wa la yushrik bi ibadat rabbihi ahada he should act righteously like i have been doing that is understood and should not call partners to allah so the purpose of creation is liqa irab liqa that is meeting and knowing god communion as you have put it communion is, is with god is the purpose purpose of creation and the holy prophet comes to establish the lost communion so if he keeps the communion to himself any holy prophet and does not convey to others he has not served served the purpose of his coming if he can't give it to others then he is a liar he is a false prophet because he came to establish the lost union between god and man and those who reject it as philosophy and as if nothing is required according to the holy quran they are rejected and according to the holy quran the the proof of communion with allah is revelation by allah of some sort wahi can be made through good correct uh, good dreams true dreams through visions through spoken word through words through a messenger or as if allah is speaking behind a curtain all these are manners of wahi so wahi is the purpose of life not just a means to convey things to others but to carry people to that loftiness so that is the philosophy as we find uh, of communion in the holy quran and uh, after the book it is it is essential that it should follow otherwise the book is meaningless and useless no please you will have to wait wait in patiently until mr mustafa sabit has run out his questions <laughs>